sustainability and the Occupy movement is one of the more relevant solutions out there today. Uh, I'm sure some of you know a lot about it, some of you don't know about it, uh, but this will be a really good intro uh, to all about that movement uh, because it's a big thing going on right now in the world. Um, and I just want to read a quote by a guy named Buckminster Fuller. Uh, it goes, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, you build a new model that makes the existing model seem obsolete. And without further ado, here are our activists. Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa DiPiano, and I'm here. I'm a part of an organization called the Mobile Design Lab. And we spent about a week and a half down at Occupy Wall Street in Zuccotti Park. And we were really working on sustainable solutions. We went in and installed a gray water system for the Occupy Kitchen. And they were able to dispose of their wastewater ecologically. And we'll take a look at some of our other sustainability initiatives. But we were really trying to, to turn the park into a model village of solutions. And so we'll, we'll look at that. All right, so like Renata was saying, the park was also developing into its own community, its own village. And so you saw that there was great things, like there was a free public library, and there was also three free meals every single day. So there was an outpouring of support from all over the world. People were like from Egypt calling in pizza orders to New York City for all the occupiers. And so uh, we went down there. There was a call put out by the General Assembly for a way to really uh, deal with their waste dishwater. Because they were washing so many dishes, they were coming up with all this dishwater, and there was really no So you can see the drums that we're using are food grade. They're 50 gallon food grade drums, and so they're <coughs> in half. And so you actually have uh, plants that can tolerate both drought and then infuses of water. And what's going on with those plants is there's a, a symbiotic relationship with microorganisms that are living on the base of the plants. So they're actually able to digest all this, the soap from the water, from the gray water and use that as fertilizer. And so we got the system together. It's another shot of that. Um, and then it was really, it was quite a scene. We were rolling up to the park. There was nowhere to park. And so my friend has this giant truck and we put all the different components in the truck. And it was somewhat like a scavenger hunt going through the city, pick, picking up all of these different pieces for the system. We needed to make a biofilter because that wasn't a part of the system. And so we went and we gathered wood chips and cut another 50 gallon drum for the biofilter that would separate a lot of the, the food scraps from the actual gray Hold water. Up. And people from the kitchen met us. And within, I would say, 15, 20 minutes, we were installing the system together with a lot of people that were working in the kitchen. And so it was a really interesting example of really just designing right there. And the whole design process was somewhat of a spectacle. And we were involving a lot of people. So really what we were doing was demonstrating an alternative economy, because a lot of people were fighting against, like you saw, the disparity between the rich and poor in our current economy. So we were showing that there is another economy that's possible, that's very real, and that has been going on for centuries before money was an actual thing. Uh, so just looking at trade is that model. And then one of our next projects before the park got cleared out was working on a total redesign of the park using permaculture principles. And so uh, you can see already, this is from the New York Times, there is a clothing supplies and medical supplies area, information table, food table, media, uh, but we really wanted to make it a more efficient design. And so that was, that was our next other things we were working on is, is energy. So a lot of this movement was made popular by Facebook and Twitter and all of the social media. And they needed power in the park to, to run those things. First, and they were using diesel, and then they switched to biodiesel. But it was the fire department came in and confiscated all of the, all of the generators. And so what happened next um, was bike generators. And so that was another creative thing it did was it got people participating in like actually powering the park. Compost. So as this occupation became more of an encampment, 
we were really faced with some of the struggles and realities that our modern cities are faced with. And one of those was waste disposal. And fairly quickly, there was recycling and compost operations happening in the park. And all of the compost was then taken by bicycle and off to other community garden plots where they were able to transform it into compost and then use it to grow gardens. So very quickly, a lot of this infrastructure, sustainable infrastructure, sprung up. 